Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the Cargo Lux maintenance hangar and in the background, the beautiful 747-8. But we're not gonna be looking at the 747 today. Instead, we'll talk about the plane which is most likely going to revolutionize the aviation industry, the brand new Boeing 777X, specifically focusing on the foldable wingtips. Now, to be fair, this isn't the first time we have seen this in aviation. Foldable wings and wingtips are very common among fighter jets to make more space on aircraft carriers, but she will be the first commercial plane able to fold her wingtips. We'll be focusing on how does it work, what the pilots have to do, is it safe and reliable, and more importantly, why is it suddenly a new feature on today's passenger aircraft? Let's fold away and let's get started. That's a 210, actually make it right. Bravo, then pop. I'll save you a turn. Thank you, right? Bravo, then short of pop. I'm sure many of you have seen the recent takeoff and landing of Boeing's new 777X at Painfield in Everett. Now, essentially, it's the latest model of the 777, so to replace the classic 777, which has been around since 1994. Whilst competing with Airbus equivalent aircraft, the Airbus A350-900 and 1000. Now, visually, there are a number of big changes we are seeing on this aircraft, and besides those absolutely humongous engines, the other significant difference are the foldable wingtips. Now, but why haven't we seen this in the past on aircraft such as the A380 or the 747? We see it a lot in military aviation to fit lots of aircraft onto an aircraft carrier. So why on earth would commercial aviation start using the same idea? So hold that thought for a minute whilst we first look on how these foldable wingtips actually work. At the tip of these gigantic 777X carbon fiber wings, we find the foldable wingtip. Now, once the aircraft is powered up, the hydraulic actuators are able to rotate the tip from the taxi position to the in-flight position. Now, once the wingtips are in place, they are locked in by an electrical locking mechanism, which holds the tips in place during flight. Now, this is just an assumption of mine, but from a technical standpoint, I'm pretty sure that the electrical lock is connected to the wheels on ground sensor, meaning the wingtips cannot fold upwards during flight. And secondly, no electrical power is needed to hold them in place in case there is some kind of electrical power loss in flight. And a similar principle for the hydraulic actuator. You need hydraulic pressure to fold it upwards and little to no pressure to keep them extended in case of a hydraulic issue. Now compare it to the landing gear. Hydraulic pressure to keep it up but no pressure needed to extend it, making the system independent. Also, the leading edge of the foldable wingtip is electrically heated to prevent ice from accumulating and is turned on with the wing anti-ice switch on the overhead panel. So what's new for the pilots? Well, there will be a new switch added to the overhead panel and a little animation of the wingtips will be shown on the upper ICAS display. So as the pilots taxi towards the holding point being clear of any obstacles, they place the wingtip switch from folded to extended. Now this action then is cross-checked on the ICAS, displaying the tips in transit from folded to extended, whilst lining up on the runway. Now the master warning will go off and the takeoff configuration warning will be displayed in red if the pilots advance the thrust levers for takeoff whilst the wingtips are still in transit. It's the same warning you would get in case of an incorrect takeoff flap setting, for example. Upon landing, the wingtips automatically fold upwards once the ground speed is less than 50 knots. Should there be a malfunction during the folding procedure, it will be relayed to the pilots via the master caution light and an audible tone. Also, future 777 pilots need to be a little patient as the whole folding process will take up roughly 20 seconds. But we'll talk about that in a minute, so stick with me. Most airlines will be ordering this to replace their aging 777 classic fleets, which have been around more than 25 years, meaning Boeing needed to build an aircraft that can still operate into these airports in the exact same way, but provide higher passenger load better fuel economy and increased range. Now the wingspan of the 777X with its wingtips in the in-flight configuration reaches 71.8 meters. 
folded, they're only 64.8 meters, respectively seven meters less. Why is this important? Well, for this, we need to think about the airports that airlines will fly into using this aircraft. Now, today's airports already are jam-packed to the brim with planes arriving and departing every minute, traffic jams during taxi, more ground equipment and ever-growing terminal buildings. So as you can imagine, an extra seven meter wingspan can start to cause issues on the ground when taxiing, risking hitting buildings, light poles, antennas, and the worst case, hitting other aircraft. Special taxi charts had to be put into place for the plane behind me, the 747-8, with a wingspan of only 68 meters. And the same goes for the Airbus A380 with a wingspan of nearly 80 meters, which is even worse. But Boeing was prepared for this and hence we now have foldable wingtips. When we compare the 777 Classic with the 777X wingspan in the folded configuration, they are identical, 64.8 meters. This means the new aircraft can use all the same parking stands and taxiways that the Classic 777 uses today. It might not seem like a big deal, but airports won't have to build special stands as they had to build for the likes of the Airbus A380, for example. If we look back on that, we all remember airports having to build special taxiways and terminal gates just to fit and accommodate the new chubby double-decker aircraft. <laughs> Airlines can implement a 777X into their fleet without the worry of any operational changes and more importantly, won't cost the airline and airports more money. The next big question, does the folding wingtip help with performance? In short, yes. However, the implications of a folding wingtip takes away any opportunity for fuel to be stored in the wingtip. Now, usually fuel tanks in wings are vital for long range flights, but now the space for fuel in the wings has been reduced. It's not all doom and gloom for the airlines though. The new General Electric 9X engines on the 777X each provide 30,000 pounds more thrust than the classic 777GE90 engines, which were the most powerful jet engines until recently. And this is the best part about it, Although the new ones are more powerful, they also have a 10% reduced fuel burn compared to the older engines. General Electric really went above and beyond with that engine, trust me. <laughs> so theoretically, the aircraft can cover the same distance using less fuel, making the issue of less fuel storage almost redundant. This issue diminishes even more when you start thinking of the increased aerodynamics of having an extra seven meters of wingspan to deploy. Now, if you paid attention during your aerodynamics lessons in flight school, you know with extra wingspan comes a higher aspect ratio, with which comes more lift, reduces the fuel burn, and an allowance for greater payloads. Yes, I know a little more weight and more drag, but still. Now picture yourself being an airline CEO of a modern day and age airline. What do you expect from an airplane manufacturer if you are considering buying a new plane? There's three key components, fuel burn, passenger capacity and range. Now the 777X has conquered all three without compromising the operation of the jet on ground. In the air, it has the larger wingspan than its competitor, the Airbus A350, which only has a wingspan of between 64 to 65 meters, can seat more passengers and is more fuel efficient relative to its load it can carry. Boeing has proudly said it will be the biggest and most efficient twin engine aircraft in the world. It makes it obvious as to why Boeing has already received billions of dollars worth of orders for the huge jet already from the likes of Emirates, British Airways and Lufthansa. Now with a jet that is the same size at the gate as the classic 777, but provides a better range, payload and fuel efficiency in the air, it's no surprise as to why Boeing has achieved this. Will any of this cause issues? Well, of course, anything new in aviation is bound to not immediately run smoothly. New technology on aircraft, or in fact, anything that involves any moving parts is bound to have teething issues. Unfortunately, it may cause slight delays at runway holding points as the extra checks 
and extension of the wingtips may take longer than traditional jets, airports operating at high capacity may have issues then with this new jet. Remember the problems Airbus had with their Airbus A320 Neo engines after startup. Questions which need to be addressed are what happens if the wingtips don't fold up after landing? Where could it then park and vice versa? What if the wingtips don't extend for takeoff? Although these are potential worrying topics to think about, Boeing has assured airlines that checklists and backup procedures designed from the ground up are in place to ensure that these issues have a low possibility of having any real effect on daily operations. So I wouldn't be surprised if Boeing fitted a little hand crank somewhere near the wingtip with which a mechanic then can extend the wingtips on the ground in case of a malfunction. It's still a Boeing at the end of the day. <laughs> Personally, I cannot wait to taxi behind a 777X and watch her extending her wingtips. It has a kind of a Knight Rider touch to it, don't you think? <laughs> I'm also super happy for Boeing as this is the breakthrough the company needed after the currently unknown Boeing 737 MAX program. But at the same time, it makes me a little sad as they now have released a plane that will definitely end the era of this magnificent plane in the background. Please share your thoughts on this new wing technology in the comment section below and I'm excited to see what you think of it. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. And follow my Instagram account. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. Your Captain Joe.